attention and listen. I'm going to preach on the real meaning of the great eclipse, the solar eclipse, the real meaning of the solar eclipse tomorrow across the country. Two places. We'll start in Song of Solomon, chapter number 6, and uh, then we're going to Genesis chapter 1 to begin with. And I ask you to keep your Bibles open. Uh, I need a little more volume on this this little one. There you go. Well, thank you. Um, so I get going, maybe you might have to turn me down just a tad. But um, we'll uh, look in Genesis, Song of Solomon chapter 6 this, this morning and then Genesis chapter number 1. If somebody beside you does not have a Bible, share yours with them uh, this morning that we can all look at this scripture together. Because we're going to learn something and then you'll know more uh, than the scientists at NASA by the time we get done. Uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse number 10. Song of Solomon 6, 10. If you know Song of Solomon, it's a picture of Jesus Christ and the bride. It's a love story, and it represents the bride and the bridegroom, Jesus Christ and the church. Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 10. Who is she, she, the female, that looketh forth as the morning... That's the second advent of Jesus Christ. Perfect picture. Fair as the moon. So she is a picture as the moon. Clear as the sun. She'll be like the sun. And terrible as an army with banners. A picture of the church coming back as an army in the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the moon is pictured as a she. The sun is pictured as a he. And it's a picture of the church. Look back in Genesis chapter number one and see how it all got started. Genesis one, oh, let's see, verse 14. And God said, this is on the fourth day, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven. Why? To divide day from night. And let them be for what? Somebody say that next word. Signs. They're for signs. They're not just for light. They are for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And, and it was so. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day. That's the sun, the S-U-N. And the lesser light to rule the night. That's the moon. He made the stars also, P.S., billions of them, they say, uh, billions of them. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And verse 19, the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now, this solar eclipse that we're going to see tomorrow, most places, uh, I'd like to talk about it a little bit because it's, absolutely been completely, unbelievably uh, spread across this country. People in America are always wanting to look something special and spend their money. Millions and millions of dollars will be spent. Motels. They're calling out the National Guard in some little towns tomorrow down across that path of that total eclipse there because Towns that have two and 3,000 people are expecting 150,000 tomorrow as visitors. The path of this thing we're going to cross, the reason it's so significant is it's the only total solar eclipse that we've seen go across this country, the entire country, since June of 1918, 99 years ago. And you want to really hear something weird? It's the only solar eclipse seen by only America since 1776. Isn't that weird? The year our country was founded. Sort of weird. But as always, the attention seekers and the shallow Bible teachers seek to sensationalize something like this. 
and, and sell books and get views on YouTube. So they have absolutely gone crazy. The Satanists, the Wicca people, the Luciferian uh, people have all gone crazy saying it's a sign, it's a sign. It's 33 days before that big day of September 23rd when everything's supposed to go crazy. You know, there's a lot of prophetic events surrounding September 23rd. Not biblical, not biblical, but a lot of signs. There is something about September 23rd, 21st, 2nd, 3rd, about those missing days and the birth of Jesus and the second advent. There's a lot of stuff about that. But there's nothing about the like people are trying to make this. They say it's only 33 days before that. It's 40 days before Yom Kippur that at the very end of September, or at September the 30th. And they are saying that everything's going to change after tomorrow and the world will never be the same and everything like that. The Bible does not say that. And you can look for everything to be the same Tuesday and Wednesday as it is today. And somebody made a bunch of money off of it. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that in just a minute. Uh, the last one that we saw partially was in 1979. And, you know, they couldn't make millions of dollars off glasses back then. Uh, our teachers at school, we just took a, a, a shoebox, cut a little hole in it, and you viewed it that way, you know, made our own view, and I'm not telling you to do that. I say you'll go blind and all of that. Uh, um, I looked at the sun for a second the other day, and I didn't go blind. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm not telling you to do that. Calm down. But uh, they, they say in this 33 number is connected with it. Oregon, where it enters into the United States, it was the 33rd state. As it comes across and winds up in South Carolina, 33 degrees parallel would be the state of South Carolina. Probably nothing. They also say that across that path of that line voted 95% Trump. Probably nothing. Or maybe the Lord's blocking it out on purpose. I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you that one way or the other. But at about 2.30 tomorrow afternoon in South Carolina and the tip of North Carolina, we'll see what they call a total eclipse. They're expecting hospitals uh, to have all kinds of emergencies, uh, ambulance wrecks and and highway arrest and traffic jams and, and everything else in the world uh, are always going on. There's always somebody trying to cash in on something like that. But in the beginning, God made the sun and the moon uh, to separate day from night. And he made two great lights. When the moon comes between the earth and the sun, it's called a solar eclipse. Lunar, when it's the other way around. Now, there's three or four different types of eclipse. There's a partial eclipse, like we'll see here. And then there's an annular eclipse where you can see a circle around the moon. And you can see a little fire going, depending on how far it is away. And then there's the uh, total eclipse, like you'll see tomorrow. And then another one or two. Uh, let's look at these all three this morning. And first of all, I want to talk about the sun. The reason I'm doing this is because the Bible talks a lot about the sun and the moon. And sign. The Bible has talks about the sun around 100 times. You know that sun up there this morning is a whopper. Let me tell you. It is a great light to rule. The Bible said in Ecclesiastes 11.7 that it is a pleasant thing for the eyes to behold the sun. And of course, everybody. The diameter of the sun, 865 thousand miles, just across it like that, like that, and way, way, 93 million miles from here, if we're to believe the scientists. I'll say more about that in a minute. The temperature on the face of the sun, 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's mentioned 100 times in the Bible. Uh, we say the sun rises at 6.35, sets at 8.32, and people laugh and say, oh, you silly people believe the sun moves. Well, all you got to do is look at the newspaper, look at any book, in the world, and it talks about sunrise and sunset. We're not dumb. We know, we know everything's moving. I'll talk more about that in a minute. So you're not being ignorant by saying sunrise and sunset. It does. Look at it. Uh, and so will people of all cultures down through the years have long worshipped the 
the sun like it was some kind of deity. And there will be those who do that tomorrow. These weird, hippie, sort of crazy people uh, that are worshiping, oh, oh, I felt something. They probably felt something, but it wasn't sun or the moon. Probably an evil spirit gets in them. The sun puts off, they say, more energy in just a second or two than mankind has used throughout all of the history of the world. Uh, the sun has, is a picture of God and the Lord Jesus, as I'll say in, a minute, in, in just a minute. It has heat rays, it has light rays, and then it has actinic rays. Three types of rays come from the sun. That's a picture of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Here's where we start leaving scientists in the dust behind us because we have access to the greatest science book of all time, a 1611 King James Bible. And so we'll talk about that. Heat rays. Heat rays, you can feel them, but you can't see them. That's a picture of the Holy Spirit. You can feel him, but you can't see him. Light rays, you can see them, but you can't feel them. You can see light, but you can't feel it. That's a picture of the Lord Jesus. We beheld his glory when, when he was here. And then a tenic rays, you can't see or feel. And that's God the Father. A picture of that. What is the sun in the Bible a picture of? It's a type. There is no doubt about typology in the Bible. The sun, ladies and gentlemen, is a picture of none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. It's a picture of it. God didn't have to do that. God didn't have to put a ball of fire out there in outer space. He could have figured out some other way to heat this world and bring life. Did you know the word life does not show up in your Bible until the sun is here? That means all life on this earth Physical uh, uh, plant life depends upon the sun. Nothing can live without the rays of the sun. And this, uh, as I said again, this is where scientists get off. We was with them there for a little while. Now we keep on going and they're back there, they're back there peddling in the mud, stuck, because they refuse to take what God said about any subject. Turn your Bible to Psalm 19. Now let me show you a verse of scripture here this, this morning. And let's look here at this prophetic scripture in your Bible about the sun. Psalm 19, and uh, let's look uh, this morning at verse number five. Uh, well, verse four, uh, uh, verse two, day unto day utter speech, night unto night uttereth knowledge. It shows the world that there's a God. There is no speech, there is no tribe or language on earth where they don't get a witness from God. Look what it said, verse three. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out throughout all the earth. Their words to the end of the world. In them, those lines out the world, he has set a tabernacle for the sun. Here's the second coming, the sun, S-U-N, which is as. The two greatest words for understanding the Bible are like and as. Like and as. Look what he said. As a bridegroom, Jesus Christ, coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run the race. And there's over and over and over where the sun, the sun goes down of the evening. When it goes down, it's blood red. That's a picture of the death of Jesus on the cross. It's buried. It goes around, or we go around. It goes down. The next morning, up, and it's resurrection time. It's also a picture of the second advent where it burns up as an oven. All the way through the Bible, the sun is a picture of the S-U-N. The shortest day of the year is December the 21st, 2nd, 3rd, along in there. That's what made people back in the old days think that the sun, S-U-N, was going out. They thought the sun was dying. And then they had they built fires and everything to try to keep it alive. They was heathen. They didn't know what they was doing. And they didn't have the Bible, right? They didn't understand it. Then about the about the middle, the, the last few days of December, first of January, the sun starts getting stronger again. 
And they call that the birthday of the Son, S-U-N. That's why Christmas wound up on December 25th and Jesus was not born nowhere near that time of year. But that's another story. God made the Son on the fourth day. That's not an accident. The Bible said in the Bible, in God, on God's calendar, that one day is as a thousand years with the Lord and a thousand years is as one day. Wonder why God, wonder why God didn't just say, bang. Like somebody said, they said, I believe in the big bang. God spoke, bang, there it was. That's right, that's how it got here. But you know what? God made everything in six days. He made plant life. He made uh, this and he made that. And then when he come to the fourth day, he made the sun, S-U-N. One man told me, he said, now each one of those days could have been millions of years. Well, that's somebody that's intimidated by science, falsely so-called, and scared just to take what God said. No, they couldn't. No, they couldn't. The Bible said the evening and the morning were the first day. It can't get no plainer than that. God said day, God meant day, evening and morning. You say, well, how do you know? Because he made plants and stuff on that third day. You mean to tell me plants and, and trees lived on earth a million years before the sunlight hit them? I don't think so. He made it all in six literal days and rested on the seventh. There's a reason for that. God could have just said, you know what the Lord could have done? The Lord could have just said, Everything, and everything would have been there in a split second. He could have done it in a split second before it happened if he wanted to. He, done, he can do anything. But he made this, he made that, he made this, he made that. Each one represents a thousand years. One thousand, two thousand, the, the flood of Noah, Abraham's time. Three thousand, four thousand, four thousand. Jesus Christ shows up on this earth. You know when he shows up on this earth? After 4,000 years, the fourth day. He dies on the cross. There's 4,000 years before him. There's 2,000 years after him, making a total of six days. And you and I are at the very tiny tip end of that sixth day, getting ready for that seventh, the day of rest, the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, scientists don't know that because of their limited knowledge and their, their amateur education that they have. They have no clue that God made the sun on the fourth day to picture Jesus Christ, his son, showing up on the fourth day uh, to die for our sins. And, and so the Bible tells us that's why the word life don't show up until the fourth day in your Bible because in him is life and the light was the light of men. All right, we've talked about the sun. Let's talk about the moon. There's a lot in the Bible about the moon. And, and here again, they're going to sensationalize it. I've seen them books. I got the books on the blood moons and all that stuff that was supposed to have happened two years ago. That's why you don't go out on ground. The Bible don't give you no right. You don't have no right to say something's going to happen. The Bible don't say it's going to happen. If you'll notice here at our church, I say some stuff, and I'll say this could be or that could be. But when I'm saying that, I'm on solid ground. And I'm very careful not to make predictions and prophecies that are not Bible-based because they're private and, and just man's opinion. All right? Now, let's look at the moon. The moon would be a lesser light. It's 238,000 miles from here if we believe science, if we believe them. Now, I'm up here. Hey, I'm up here. Uh, if you were to believe science, it is 238 thousand miles from here. Couldn't prove it. It's one fourth the size of the earth. The diameter of the moon, of course, is much smaller. You've heard the story I tell about them, the blondes. They were sitting out there on the, on the bank one day at the river one night and they was looking up at the sky and one blonde said, I wonder which is further, Florida or the moon? And the other one said, duh, you can see the moon. That's what people don't understand. Now listen, the moon, that's a long, it's a long way. 238,000 miles from here. The, 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 the size of the moon is very small compared to the sun. She, the moon, we call it, call it a she, picture of the church, is earthbound. 
That means it's stuck. It stays with the earth, rotating around the earth like this. While the earth's spinning and going around the sun, the moon's going around the earth, and everything, we're all moving, they say. Now, it's a type of the church. Uh, no man is neutral. Uh, the, 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 the earth rotates against the sun, you can't stand neutral. You're either going against Jesus Christ or you're going with Jesus Christ. He that is not for me is against me. They don't know that either. The moon has no life of its own, no light of its own. It's a dead planet. You hear me? The moon is a dead planet. It don't shine. People say, well, the moon shines. You know why can the moon shine? The sun over yonder shines on the moon and it reflects to a dark world. You know how come we can see the moon at night? Because the sun's on the other side over there shining on it and we look up and we say, boy, the moon sure is bright tonight. That's the sun's light. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Uh, the moon's out there, a picture of the church of Jesus Christ. We are dead and our life is hid with Christ. Christ in God. We are dead without him. And Jesus Christ shines, when Jesus Christ shines on the church, the dark world sees light. And oh, God set them in the sky for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Hallelujah, what a great God we've got this morning. I don't know about all them billions and billions of planets. You say, well, Brother Danny, they say there's billions and billions. That's what they say. I, I couldn't prove it. I know there's a glass, sea of glass out there that reflects. And if you look in a mirror at stuff, it looks like way more than what it is. And I know if they are, God made them. And they look at us and say, how dumb to believe the Bible. You mean tell me, why would God put life on one little planet on the back side of nowhere like a speck of dust and all those billions of planets. God wouldn't do something like that. There again, they have a they have a isolated mentality. They're not educated. They don't they never thought that God's got plans for them planets in the future one day. Oh yeah, these big big plan. They didn't read Isaiah where it said the increase of his government, there shall be no end. It's gonna keep getting bigger and bigger. Listen, buddy, I mean when you got saved, you got God owns a little end of something big, buddy. God's got plans for the universe. It's a running right on schedule. He ain't up there taking aspirins, wondering if the bottom's gonna fall out tomorrow. God's got it all under control. Amen? So there's two sermons a day being preached to a lost world. Day in the day utter speech. Night in the night uttereth knowledge. The world sees two sermons every day. When the sun goes down, when the sun comes up, Resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shine on, shine on. Harvest moon, brother. Up in the sky. That's the church. And when the church is right with God, the moon is bright, shining a light to a dark world. Number three. The earth. You know that thing tomorrow they say is going to cross over 12 states? How symbolic. 12 tribes of Israel. 12 million people live in that land. Always somebody trying to find something and say, oh, I found it. You know why? Because Americans, everybody wants something sensational. That's why these feel good, make me happy feel churches are telling you, I want to see a miracle. I want to see somebody get healed. I want to see, I want to see something great. I want to see something great. Whatever happened to just believe in what God said and letting him, we don't have to be entertained all the time. Brother, just take the truth like God said for you to. There's still going to be cellular blockouts. There'll be so many people in one place trying to use their phone. Nobody's phone will work. That's what they're saying. <laughs> That'd be a blessing. I hope that happens. Some people have to go to the hospital if they had to do without their phone for two hours, two and a half minutes or whatever. Number three, the earth. Now we're going to talk about the earth. God made the earth as a place for man to inhabit. It has an atmosphere and water. The earth, they say, we rotate every 24 hours, just about on the dot, every time. Now, that can't be an accident. If you could stop, you can't, but if you could stop and just rise up, I could rise up there in the air and just be still and let the earth keep going around me, I'd, you'd be back here tomorrow and I'd join you at the same spot. But uh, 
66,000 mile an hour wind would be hitting me. <laughs> so I don't think I'd last long uh, hanging up there. All right. They say we're going 66, in that odd, 66,000 miles an hour around the sun. Now what I'm getting ready to tell you now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet my life on. It's just what they say. I don't have no reason to say they're wrong. The only time I can say science is wrong is where they contradict the Bible. Where they ain't, there's some smart people and they do, they do know some good stuff. But where they contradict the Bible, they are wrong. Don't ever forget that. Wrong. Uh, don't let them intimidate you. Don't be afraid because they don't, they, uh, they don't understand what I'm giving you this morning. Now, they say that the world is spinning like this and it's also going around the sun and the sun's also moving and then the galaxies are moving and then we're going through space at millions of miles. We're millions of miles away from where I started there a minute ago if they're telling us right. It ain't no wonder you're crazy. Is it? I mean, you're, you're slung around like you're in a, a blessed uh, ride of carowinds or something all the time. I'm telling you, I, I don't even know if that's true or not. I don't see how you can tell if everything's moving if there's not a still reference point. If everything's moving, how do you know how fast? Well, you ever been in a car wash and one of them kind of guys and you sit there and you, you put the brakes on, you'd swear you was moving and you ain't, it's that moving. <laughs> I don't know how they figure out all that stuff. The earth has a gravitational pull. What does that teach us? What does that teach us? Watch. I'm going to try to get away from this old world. I'm going to, I'm going to outer space. I'm going to go to outer space. I can't. It keeps pulling me back down here. Now, I know some boys that can get closer to outer space than I can. But for old man, I try. I can touch that. I might can touch that, but I can't get away from this world. It keeps pulling me down. That's all the way through Scripture. The pull of the world is always on. You know what the rapture is? When God cancels gravity's hold on us and it lets go and we go home to be with him. Ain't that something? Now the earth wobbles because it's not exactly right on its axis. Matter of fact, they can show you, they say, Pictures of where it's a little lopsided a little bit. And all that, there, there was a great judgment one day and everything's been out of whack ever since. Psalm 82 says all the foundations of the earth are out of course. So it got knocked out of, it got knocked out of rhythm there. It used to be 360 days a year. There was a canopy over it. And then when the flood came, God opened up the great deep. All that water didn't come out of a cloud. Couldn't put that much water in a cloud. The o God opened it up out of Bam! Drown this world. That's why rocks and mountains are sticking up everywhere. Just old jagged cliffs and everything. It's evidence that the Bible's right when it said there was a great flood on this earth. That's why you find fish fossils up on top of mountains. Buried fish. What was all them fish doing up there? That was a flood. The earth rotates against the sun. That means if you're going with this world, you're going against Jesus Christ. The world, and, and it pulls the moon with it against the sun. This old world, try, it's 18 miles a second we're moving, they say. Can't guarantee that. But that's why Paul said, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. That's why the Bible talks about it being uh, out of whack. Out of, it's like if you go to California. Have you, ever been to, have you ever flew to California? It takes an hour longer to get back than it does to get there. You know why? Because watch. Here's California. And I go up in an when I go up in an airplane, the world keeps spinning. I get there quicker. But when I'm coming back, the world's spinning that way and I have to chase it and find North Carolina down here somewhere. That's right. That's right. How's that for your science lesson? Now... Let me show you what an eclipse is. I will now show you what an eclipse is and what does it mean. All right, uh, Aunt Jess, get me that, that all in there. Jeremy, I want you to come up here just a minute and I want you to help me. And I'm going to illustrate to you right now what, uh, what an eclipse is. All right, my Aunt Jess here will come and uh, that's the biggest one I could find. I had it in the swimming while I was gone. Uh, all right, I want you to stand right there 
and hold that up. That was going to be the sun. That sort of looks like the sun, the yellow. There, shining at you. The go eye winking at you. Now, I'm going to let uh, Jeremy here hold this little little ball here, and it's going to represent the earth. All right, get down there on, on the floor somewhere, brother. About right down there where, Jer- where Jimmy is. Now, there's the earth. Here's outer space. Here, this marble is the moon. That's the moon. Now, the moon, now this ain't scale. If this was scale, the moon would be a speck of dust out to exit 105 somewhere. <laughs> but uh, th- you have to use your imagination a little bit and let this be scale. Here's the earth. The earth is spinning like this, they say, going around the sun. I forget how many, huh? a million miles, one trip around there, 365 and one-fourth days. And then the moon stays, stays with the earth. Now what's going to happen tomorrow is the moon will become between the sun and the earth and block it out. Now let me show you what's weird. Did you know that the, the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon? And did you know that the sun just happens to be 400 times further than the, sun, the moon? Accident. Scientists have no... I, I read an article this week because I was studying on this, and they said, what are the odds of that happening? There, nobody knows. That's why they both look the same in the sky. They look like they're the same size, don't they? That one's 400 times bigger than that one. Because see, let's see here now. Now I'm going to let this, this block, uh-oh, got to back up, got to back up. Getting right in there now. Come on over here, Jeremy. Here's going to be right here where my face is. Right here, where, right there. It's going to be like that right there. Because right now, that marble looks the same as that ball. That's the earth. Like, if it was right there, it couldn't happen. If it was right there, it couldn't happen. If the sun was a little closer, we'd burn up. If it was a little further away, we'd all freeze to death. So you're telling me, atheist, that that's an accident. They both look, that's exactly from right here. That's how you know how close it is to earth. It's right there like that. Right here where my eye is. There it is. There's the sun. There's the moon. So tomorrow it's coming across Oregon. Oregon is over here. Oregon is over there. But I'm going to put it here for now. Oregon's really that way, ain't it? Okay. All right. Here it goes. Your science lesson today, boys and girls, here comes the eclipse. Get your glasses on. You better get your glasses on. It's going to blind you. Ah! Two minutes, it's over. You done spent all your money. <laughs> it's over. We'll get to see it on. T- they got jets chasing that thing. Have you heard about them jets from NASA chasing that thing? I'd like to see it, but I've, I've, been, in, I've been down there for three days and had to come home. So I really would like to see it. But anyway, all right. Now, y'all can sit down. Now here's what happened. One, one more second. One more second. You know what an eclipse is? It's when the church, the moon, blocks the world from seeing the sun. And now it's preaching time. That was your science lesson. Now it's time to preach. I'm just going to tack a couple of things on. You know why this world can't see the Lord Jesus Christ? Because a bunch of hypocrite church people. That ain't what we claim to be. Amen? That's right. I've, I've seen it over and over and over and over and over. Brother Danny, I had a phone call one day. It's been years ago. There ain't nobody in here, so you don't know who I'm talking about. So is this Danny Castle? I said, yes, yes it is. Is so-and-so a member of your church? Yes, he sure is. Well, let me tell you about him. I said, this man is a, is a homosexual. This man is this. This man, I, I just went, oh, God, Lord, please. I mean, the guy's a preacher. The guy sings in the choir. The guy, and I said, I hope you're wrong. I, I mean, I don't listen to gossip, please. And, buddy, I'm telling you, they said, I'd never, I'd never step foot in a church where that man goes. I got a letter one day, and it said, Dear Mr. Castle, I work at a certain factory up in Marion. You have a church member who claims to be a preacher that goes to this church. He is wicked. He flirts with every woman that walks by. He says things that are off color. 
And I said, I think it would be good if you, and I mean, I'm thinking, I'm, and so I've heard people say, you mean to tell me that that person, I mean, he's full of, the, he tells dirty jokes. I mean, he cusses. He does you mean to tell me they're a Christian? I'm going to tell you, you know what an eclipse is? You know what the meaning of an eclipse is? It's teaching us that when the church ain't right with God, it blocks out the light of the Lord Jesus Christ to this old dark world that needs to see the Savior. Preacher, I'd come to church. But old so-and-so, oh, he claims to be a Christian. You say, well, I liked it better when you was teaching us about science. I'm sure you did. But that's why we're having eclipse. It's not an accident. God's showing part of the Bible belt. That's the real meaning, that the church ain't supposed to come between Jesus and the world. Now, you know what the future is? Revelation chapter 21, verse 23, said that city has no need of the sun, the light of the sun. Brother, we're going to a city that won't need the sun. The sun will have served its purpose. It may wind up being the lake of fire. There are a lot of people that teach that. Then off in outer space somewhere, they're gone. That may be true. I don't know, but I'm telling you one thing, brother. It's going to be gone. It's going to be gone. We have no more need of the light of the sun. No more eclipses. Everything's perfect. We'll be in the city of God and live forever and ever and ever and ever and never have a problem. There won't be no night there. You don't go to sleep there. Some of you would hate that, wouldn't you? Uh, you would hate, I don't know what you're going to do in heaven and have to stay awake all the time. Uh, uh, you're gonna have, some of you young people are going to have a hard time with it. Uh, but I'm telling you this morning, we're going to have a great time. We're on our way. I, what, listen, no astronomer in the world can explain the odds of that happening, them being just the right distance from a sun like that. you got to get the Bible to get that. You got to get the Bible. That's why the old preachers say they catch up about every 1,500 years. Scientists used to believe all kind of weird things. They used to believe if it cut you, it'd bleed diseases out of you. And that's how people died. They bled them to death. You're better off to stick with this book and what it says. Let's stand. Let's stand by our head for prayer.